All right, we are recording now. Uh, just to let everyone know, I will be posting this as well uh, online on my probably my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, but uh, so yeah, I mean, last time somebody uh, was a bit surprised that it got posted online and because they had said something that they probably didn't want to say about their company or something. So be careful on that because this will be posted online for others to access. Um, so let's get started here. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. Uh, so today's agenda, uh, I mean, it's big enough here. So adaptive cards, uh, the mask will be covering that. Uh, that will be around 40 minutes. Um, he has uh, a bunch of it to cover, so he'll be uh, taking around 40 minutes. I'll be covering some MBAS updates, uh, the major ones at least, because there were a bunch of them. I can't cover them all. And so, and after that, it'll be, it'll be like an open table discussion. Um, even now, please feel free to unmute yourself at any point of time and uh, just ask any questions. And actually, uh, before we start, I I would actually appreciate if everyone can just go around and just introduce themselves, where they are from, and uh, just something uh, something you uh, about your power addiction maybe. Anyone who wants to start, Michelle. Clifton, anyone? <laughs> so maybe maybe I start because I, ahead, I guess yeah. that maybe not everyone knows me. I, there is a slide in my presentation about me, but okay, yeah, we can do it faster. So I'm Tomasz Poszetek, and yes, actually I'm coming from Poland. It's uh, it's in Europe. Uh, this, I'm working. Uh, sorry, I'm living in capital, the, the Warsaw. And uh, well, my everyday job, my everyday work is really related to F65, to business processes, to business applications. I'm doing a lot of uh, things on Power Platform using Flow Power Apps, but also other tools like Nintex and Webcon, so other platforms for processes. And I'm also, I, I, I very strongly believe uh, in well, enabling organizations to work more effectively by really optimizing and digital, digitalizing their processes. And uh, well, that is also my passion and, and what really pushes me to still being, uh, to continuously learn and to continuously uh, stay on time with the new things that are coming up in Office 365 and Power Platform. So not to only share them with my customers, but as well with the community and with everyone who, who needs this knowledge. So yeah. that's about me, <laughs> and I'm power addict. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a bunch of other people. If anyone wants to introduce themselves, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, just give us an introduction. I'll say hello. Hi. Hey. I'll say hello. I have a strange accent that you might not be expecting in a Cincinnati user group. My name's Lisa Crosby. <laughs> I've dialed in from Australia. It's Friday morning here at 8 a.m. So I'm always excited when there's something hosted from the US or Europe that's a time zone that I'm awake. <laughs> and I'm really, really interested in adaptive cards. And I met um, Vivek over at um, BizApp Summit. So I picked up on this and thought I'd join. So uh, I work in pre-sales for a a company called Barhead here in um, in Australia, and I run App in a Day and uh, get hooked on all things all things power ups as most of us here do. So hello, <laughs> thanks for having Ooh, me. Thanks, thanks for joining, Lisa. All right, uh, anyone else? Okay, I guess uh, Tomash, I'll uh, hand it over to you to start off your uh, magic on adapter cards. All right, so I'll just start sharing. Let me stop sharing. Yep. Go. Now I ask you if you see what I'm. You can what see I'm it. Saying. You could. You can. Okay. You could minimize the the teams thing because mm. I don't want to see myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's begin then. So I've already said about myself. Um, just to summarize, I'm really working with Office 365 for over. I mean, for, with SharePoint for over ten years already, and Office 365 nearly four. So I kind of, as I call myself an expert in this field. And um, the agenda for today is quite short. 
because I have only 40 minutes. So first I would like to briefly tell you the story behind adaptive cards, then tell you something about message cards. So like the older brother of adaptive cards, then about adaptive cards 1.0. And I want to talk about 1.0 because this is the version that is being currently used in all, all Microsoft applications that has the SDK implemented. And then about the future, so what is already released what other features in other versions of, uh, of adaptive cards are already released and what is really upcoming for the for the next year for example right so let's start with that so today i think most of us is already familiar with the adaptive card concept and the cards that you can really see in all sorry to interrupt you Tomas, yeah. but uh, is everyone able to see the screen because michelle said she's not able to I mean, I can see it, so I don't know why she can. Well, I, I can't confirm if you can. Okay, so. okay, others can see it. So, Michelle, I guess you'll have to maybe disconnect and join again. So, yeah, go ahead, Tomash. Right, so those cards that we okay just minimize you so the cards the cards concept is already known in social media that is uh, a slide from the presentation that was done on microsoft build in 2017 but still is very up to date so those those cards the concept of uh, of a content being displayed in different hosts uh but showing you the same information is already known. You can find them on Twitter, you can find them uh, in Facebook, you can find them in Slack, Yammer, I believe so as well. And basically the card is, uh, is a technology, is a concept that allows you to display your content inside a host experience. What that, the, what that means is that you just create um, the data and then the host is retaking really over about the look and feel about uh, the interface, how it how it displays, how it is being formatted. So you don't have to really care about uh, the, the layout. And um, the history is quite short for adaptive cards in Microsoft. First, in 2016, um, Microsoft realized that it has a lot of, I mean, a lot, a couple of teams uh, that are really working on the same thing. Like they had Windows team working on um, on live tiles. Uh, they had Exchange team that was creating those um, message cards for for actionable actionable messages. And they also had a team around bot framework that was that was starting their job on something that that was uh, like the pre pre version of of adaptive cards. So. Um, then uh, in 2017, uh, Matt Hillinger and David Klo appeared and they created a team and they like consolidated the knowledge and all the work that was already done in those teams uh, existing in Microsoft previously. And they started to really create a common vision uh, around those cards and how to use them and where to use them. And so they started to build the SDK. And first, uh, this concept that was previously created by the uh, exchange team, so the message cards, was finally, um, let's say, matured and it was released. So in 2017, after around two years something, the message cards was, uh, the message cards were available to use. And then just a year after, uh, the adaptive cards 1.0 was presented, was released as a, as a first version. And so we can really use them until today. So who are uh, Matt Hillinger and David Klo? Because they are now the fathers, the godfathers of the adaptive cards technology. So um, Matt, Matt Hillinger is working for Microsoft uh, as a principal program manager. He is the leader currently of the adaptive cards team. He joined Microsoft, I think, around five years ago, something like that. And before he was before he joined Microsoft, he was working as a team leader for mobile applications, and he was taking over uh, the production of application for some you know, demanding customers, demanding demanding brands. And uh, David Klo, I think he's he's either French or Canadian. I I didn't I didn't check it, um, but he is a dinosaur in Microsoft. Um, he's also the principal program manager. He's working for over 14 years in Microsoft and he's been uh, in different teams already, but always focusing somewhere around Exchange. He's, for example, uh, the creator, the author of the 
uh, um, Exchange Web Services Managed AP API. He was working for Office Add-ins platforms. Uh, he was also working for Graph API uh, um, part around, around Exchange. And for over two years now, he is working with Matt in the Adaptive Cards team. And for the Adaptive Cards, for example, he is the, uh, he's the father, he's the creator of, um, of the SDK for, for JavaScript. And he also did the, the designer for adaptive cards that, that you can find under the adaptivecards.io slash designer. So that is that is uh, his baby. Okay, so let's let's continue. Um, the cards that Microsoft is creating that that that, that this team is building uh, have a lot of benefits that you can really benefit from. So first, I will natively ran that as I said. It is just a code that is being then parsed by the SDK and displayed uh, in the way that suits the certain host. Next thing is that it really adopts uh, to the host user experience. It is low cost because uh, you don't have to really create a separate version of your card, a separate layout of the card per each device, per each uh, browser, per each uh, application. You just take care about content and everything else is just working as a magic. And lastly, it's very it's very secure because um, you define the, the adaptive card via the declarative code, JSON code, and nothing that is in the JSON that is not being implemented is in SDK. So nothing that SDK can parse and display will be displayed. So therefore, if you, uh, if anyone would like to inject some sort of malicious code, that code won't simply be executed, can be maybe displayed as a text, but it may, it will not make any harm to the user. So it is really, it's really secure. Um, also, this schema uh, is very extensible, so you can really uh, take SDK and write your own extensions. For example, if you would like to have like a progress bar in adaptive card, you can add the definition of the progress bar to the SDK and then define it in uh, in the JSON schema. So it's very, very easy to extend it. Um, it allows users to both interact with the card by actions. So you can open other pages, you can submit forms and uh, saying those forms about um, uh, saying about those forms, you can also um, put input fields like text choices and so on, so that users are also able to use adaptive cards as some sort of a form. And lastly, it will allow uh, one day, or it already allows, uh, to be to be um, uh, talked. So like if you created a, a, a card, it can be uh, just read by the bot and uh, well, Read, read loud, so even people with some sort of disabilities can use adaptive cards today. Okay, so having that said, let's jump to message cards and well, what is what is it exactly? Um, as I said, message cards were born in the Exchange team uh, as a concept to create actionable messages. And today, this is a technology of the past. Uh, because Microsoft already encourages us to uh, to really migrate to adaptive cards where it is possible. Uh, the message cards are no longer being developed. It's just a closed project. However, it still has some benefits. For example, if we're talking about Microsoft Teams, you can... Yes, any questions? I just hear something in the background. If you have any questions, just, just unmute yourself, please, and, and ask them. All right, so like the major major benefit of using message cards even today is that you can send a message card via a webhook to Microsoft Teams channel. That is something you cannot do with with actually with adaptive card. But on the other hand, uh, you cannot you cannot use a lot of those configuration and layout composition options that you have today in adaptive cards, and because it is closed, it is that the project is, is closed, it will never be as functional as, uh, as adaptive cards are. Now, about, about the layout, uh, about the schema, message cards um, is basically built from the three blocks. So the first, the first is a title, there is also always a title. Then there is a section block, and 
the section block can be repeated unlimited number of times. And then within the section, you can define um, again a block that is called activity that is built from the title, subtitle and image. You can use text, you can use facts, so this sort of a table. You can as well use images and hero images. However, you can only use single occurrence, single, single, uh, I mean, only one time each type of, uh, of a component inside the section. So you can have only one text inside a section. If, you, if you'd like to have another text, you have to create another section. And lastly, at the beginning, there is, uh, there is a block for potential actions that simply allows you to uh, either put only buttons that user can click and submit a form or open URL, or you can also create there a full form uh, with input fields uh, so that users are going to be able to not only press the button to, to fill, I mean, to send something, but as well to fill in the form to, to provide additional information. And having that said, I'd like to show you a small demo about the message cards. Here it is. So that is that is um, account of my co-employee. He's called the John Researcher because we are just researching a lot of things together. Um, and that's and that's um, an example of a very simple application. Um, yes, uh, it's it's just a travel request approval. So I'll just create a new one. Um, yeah. I thanks travel. So I haven't uh, I haven't created here a power ups form because it was just meant to be very simple and fast. So you're saying power ups forms are not fast? <laughs> no, no, I mean to, to, I'm just just, just don't, didn't didn't want to uh, okay. maybe not lose but spend <laughs> more time on doing this demo. Yeah. All right. So as this <clears throat> form is being said right now. There is a regular SharePoint workflow running uh, on this list. I built this workflow using Nintex um, for both uh, because I just wanted to show you how it is built. So basically that is the workflow. And as you can see, uh, it is simply assigning a task to the manager. And then once the task is assigned, it is getting its details. And what I'm doing here is I'm sorry, not here, uh, is I'm creating a content of the message card that is then going to be sent via the webhook. So I just replace some facts with uh, placeholders. And now what is very important here, uh, what you can see is that I am sending here the approval content, um, approval outcome with the button and the task ID that I will use later. And the target that I'm sending to using the HTTP post is here. Now, who knows what is it? It's an Azure, some cognitive service. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's flow. It is flow. It is flow being triggered by the HTTP request. Ah, so th yeah, that's 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 sense. another that's another um, benefit of using message cards because in message card for the post you can define the target URL. That is not that is not possible for adaptive cards. What I what I'm going to talk about later. But for message cards, you can really define where this post message should go. So that is the message card body, and here you can find uh, that is that is the webhook to my to my Teams channel, and I'm just mm -hmm. sending the the body to the to the team. So right now I can check if I received. Uh, yeah, I just need to maximize it. Where are you here? Right, so I already received this travel request here. That mm -hmm. is that is travel request that, okay, something is fixed here, but I can now approve it. <clears throat> mm. And now you can see that once I hit submit, <clears throat> this message card is replaced with a confirmation message card, and also there is a comment below. Now, what has happened here is this message card sent this submit, uh, I mean, it sent this uh, content to Microsoft Flow that is here. And what it, 
And what this flow did is that once it received contents from the message card, so the uh, ID of the task, um, the outcome and the comment, uh, well, it parsed the information and then it took the ID, uh, sorry, the, the, the details of the task created in SharePoint environment. And based on the outcome, it, um, well, it approved the task or reject the task. And finally, it also sent back this confirmation message card. So that is um, the response that was sent to Teams. And two things happened here. First is this header that says update existing message card with the new message card. So that is a new message card here below body. And also the second header, the action status, is that the one that you saw as a comment below below the message card uh, display. So that is that is basically how it works. And well, the only, let's say, um, bad thing about using message card in this scenario is that actually anyone is able to complete the task. However, uh, you can handle it in the flow because you can check who, who really approved the task and then, uh, sorry, who, who pressed the button and then uh, display the rejection information or something like a wrong uh, notification that you are not allowed to complete the task. However, still it is, it can be confusing. So, um, mm -hmm. like you, you can, no. you can you can use it, but just take, I mean, have in mind that you cannot send it directly to a user because you cannot create a webhook to a private conversation. You can create only webhook to, to the channel. Yeah. So a question here. So I know HTTP, the trigger, it's not, uh, I mean, you, you can use it without P2, right? But the response requires a P2. Uh, it's, it requires P1. Uh, but, the HTTP trigger is yeah. fine, but how about the response? I mean, they, they both require P1 at least. Okay. Okay. And also the HTTP request, if it is outside the SharePoint, uh, if 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 it is done outside uh, Office 365 environment, requires P1. So yes, the, this this uh, scenario today requires at least premium plan. However, um, speaking about adaptive cards and going beyond. Uh, what is like in the box also requires at least P1 because there mm -hmm. are just some fantastic features. Yep. Yep. All right. Now let's move on to adaptive cards then. This concept is just a successor of the message cards. It really inherits, oh, it, it, it already inherited all the good things from the message cards, but not all, like you cannot post adaptive card to the webhook and you can post uh, the form. Um, but it's really being intensively developed. Um, Matt and, and David and their team are really working very, very hard on them. So today it has a very advanced JSON schema. It has a lot of controls. It has a lot of options. And also the SDK is already present in most of uh, Microsoft 365 um, application, applications for the communication. So you can find the SDK already in both framework, in Cortana skills, uh, in Windows timeline, uh, as well um, in Outlook and in Microsoft Teams. However, as I said in the beginning, in all of them, you can only find SDK in version 1.0. And I can't get any information on when this is going to be updated to at least 1.2 version. Uh, but uh, if you are a developer and if you really want to use a full power of the SDK of the adaptive cards, you can take the SDK uh, and really create your own application on most of the commonly used platforms such as JavaScript, Flutter, Android, iOS, and also Windows and .NET. So you can recreate your own bot, you can create your own application, and then use whatever version of the SDK you want to use. However, um, the adaptive card schema is also a bit more complex. That is the schema for version 1.0, mostly. Uh, so it is really divided into two more, Two major sections. First one is the body, the second one is actions. Um, in the body, you can create uh, multiple containers like the column set, um, the fact set, the container, container called container itself, also an image set. And then in each 
type of a container you can you can use uh, text fields rich text fields images fact sets uh, column sets so like column set is uh, is making a layout split into columns several columns um, and then in actions you can use um, the buttons that are both uh, being used for submitting and I mean, for post and get operations, for showing parts of card, for um, also for showing those inputs uh, fields like uh, input text, toggle, choice field, uh, drop down, date, and so on, and so on. However, in the next versions, you will also be able to use uh, an action set container that is also that, that will be able to be put anywhere in the layout of the adaptive card. So those buttons can be uh, placed already anywhere in cart you want. Um, now, how to create the adaptive cart, basically? Uh, today, uh, the, one of the most commonly used uh, tools to create an adaptive cart is uh, the adaptive cart designer that you can, sorry, sorry about the sheets, but I have to read my notes. Uh, so the adaptive cards designer is available under the uh, adaptivecards.io slash designer URL. That is the one that uh, David Klo created. And it basically allows you to, um, to drag and drop, create a card and then copy the JSON that is being displayed underneath and then use the JSON uh, in, in your scenario. However, apart from the Adaptive Cards Designer, you can also use uh, the App uh, the App Studio application in Microsoft Teams. You can as well use Adaptive Card uh, Visualizer for Visual Code Studio. It also allows you to uh, display the code of the Adaptive Card in the uh, layout. You can also use WPF Visualizer. So if you'd like to create um, a card for uh, like Cortana Skills or Windows Timeline, then there is also uh, a designer for that. You can as well use um, Message Playground for actionable, for actionable messages. And that is basically the very odd designer that was used to create message cards. And also there is a fantastic tool that allows you to debug your actionable messages that is called the Actionable Messages Debugger for Outlook. It works both in uh, desktop version and online version. It's an add-in. So uh, if you then send a mess, uh, an actionable messages, uh, an actionable message, and you want to see what is going on under the hood, uh, what is the communication going on if you press the button, what are the errors, then you can use this debugger to to check what is what is wrong with your card. Okay, uh, well then that's time for the demo about uh, the adaptive cards. So now I'll just jump back to my. John Research account. Um, I basically want to show you a demo built uh, um, in Power Apps and Common Data Services and Flow. I've done also a screencast about it, so if you want to know more details about how it was done, simply just check out my blog or yeah, it is it is posted there. Uh, I won't go into details now very much because we don't have that much time. But basically, there is a so tomorrow, Sorry? if you need to take some more time, that's fine. I mean, I yeah. yes, but I just want to focus on adaptive cards, not maybe on how the application in yeah. Power Apps was built or the yeah, yeah, data that's services. Fine. So just long, long story short, Power Apps working on top of common data services, and that is application used for requesting uh, the certain kind of leaves. Um, and John is now about to request a special leaf. Maybe, yeah, for this week. <laughs> All right. So right now this leaf is already here present. Uh, John can see the status, can see what, what is going on with it. And now what is going on under the hood? There is a flow being triggered and this flow is not being triggered directly by the Power Apps. It is being triggered by the Command Data Service. 
So I decided to use this P1 trigger when a new item is mm -hmm. created in Entity because the application itself has quite good error checking and validation. So therefore I decided that it's not really required for the application to wait for the response from Flow that the request has been posted. And instead I use this um, trigger on CDS. It's working like a charm, really very fast. So after nice. the, the Flow is triggered, um, the Flow is taking details for uh, is taking the request for details and his or her manager and then is simply going to uh, assigning a task to the manager and I used here um, the action that is assigning a task but it's not waiting until it is completed so it just pushes out the task and then it's moving on now one of the things that you can really see when you investigate a flow and what this assign a task action um, returns is that one of the outputs you can get from the from the action is simply the adaptive card code. It is here. Mm -hmm. so that's a new that's that's a new thing. Really, it, oh. it wasn't it wasn't working like um, I think even three weeks ago. It it still wasn't working. So you you were able to post this adaptive card to the teams but you were not able to use it. And now this uh, adaptive card looks like this. Oh. So nice. that's the, that's the adaptive card and you can use it. However, you can use it only when you send it in a private conversation to the user. So if you post this adaptive card to the channel, then approval or rejection is not going to be possible. Just, just a small disclaimer. Anyway, that is the adaptive card. However, I decided well, it's cool, but I decided to make it even cooler. Hmm. Uh, but uh, what is also important here, you have, um, I mean, the adaptive card here is built from like three three sections. First is this header information, then there is the body, that is basically everything that you can see. And lastly, there are actions. And then, um, as I said, you are not able to use the submit button yeah. in adaptive cards to send the content to a defined target URL. So in active cards, you have four actions, four possible actions. And then whereas the open URL and toggle visibility are really working totally on the client side. So the open URL is just a get and it and it opens the URL in the in the browser. The toggle visibility mm -hmm. is just showing or hiding parts of the active card. And then on the other hand, you have the show card that in some certain configuration is working on the client side, but it can also work that uh, that way that it sends um, a request to the server, to the application, and then it gets respond. And submit is this very, very special type of, a, of an action that always sends content to the application. So that if I use the action submit, you can see that there is no target, no target. And therefore, you have to create an application that handles requests for sub from submit buttons, and that this application knows how to handle them. So, for example, um, when speaking about Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Flow, that is called the Flowbot. Uh, mm -hmm. That is that is taking care of those requests, and based on uh, based on this large number of data that is being sent along with my uh, approval or rejection, um, the flow bot really knows what to do with it. So once I send it, uh, it knows what task it has to complete and then what to send in response. And therefore, if you'd like to create your own card with your own submit button, for example, to call Microsoft Flow as I did with message card, that is not possible right out of the box. You have to create your own bot to do that and implement the logic. However, as you see, there is a lot of uh, a lot of this data and it's very important to have it. So I decided to leave this actions part untouched. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> to create my own card. And for that purpose, uh, I've created my own body. Mm -hmm. I just maybe I'll show you here. I just created my own card and then I put those placeholders to, to have my own body of the card. And then simply I merge the header with body with the actions. So my card in the end looks like this. So that's my card that is being sent. 
it's just a little bit more fancy. Uh, sorry, I'm not here. And so the next step it is doing, it is simply sending this my customized adaptive card to every people, I mean, to every employee that was assigned a task, the approval task. So right now, if I jump back to Microsoft Teams, in my private communication, uh, I can already find, yes, there is already this new, this new message card, uh, sorry, ad adaptive card that was sent by the flow uh, mm -hmm. for this, for this new, for this new leaf. And what you will notice right now is that this adaptive card is also being replaced by the confirmation. However, since the Flowbot doesn't know my customizations and is operating on the original adaptive card um, content, it is replacing it with the original look and feel. Ah, so, it. yeah, so that, that's a little bit frustrating and it can be also confusing for the users. So either you have to create your own bot and really handle this um, visual, visual uh, level on your own or just to stay uh, and use the original uh, layout of the adaptive card. Or mm. simply, or simply um, agree that it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> work the way uh, you want it. Yeah. Um, all right. So then, Flow was waiting for the approval. It already stopped waiting. And next thing it is doing, um, it is sending a confirmation message also using the adaptive card to the requester. So that is that is the message that is being sent. You can see how it looks like. So that is the approval confirmation. The rejection looks the same, but has a different icon and different labels. So right now, um, if John goes to his chat. Yeah, he already sees that. Is it today? No, it's not today. Hmm. Mm. Well, it should just appear maybe in a minute. I mean, it should already be here mm. since it was sent. All right. Ah, oh, there you go. There it is. There it is. Okay. So it was already sent, and John is also notified that his request has been approved. So this is really using this digital workplace experience. No emails are running around, just Teams communication yeah. and everything stays in a single place. And then uh, the thing I, I also very much like is that uh, uh, Flow is generating an ICS file that is later uploading to the blob storage so that it will be then downloadable. However, one thing that you have to know if you want to have uh, a text file, ICS is just a text file, being mm -hmm. downloaded from blob storage when you open the URL instead of displaying it um, as a text in the browser, is that you have to use this application of the stream content ah. type. And therefore, I mean, you can use like application text or text ICS or text calendar, but every everything that is different from application of the stream will be just displayed as a text in the browser. And then mm -hmm. if this application is stream, it is going to be downloaded. And lastly, why, I'm, why, the, why the ICS file was generated? It was generated because um, last step that Flow is doing is also posting a notification to the channel so that every member of the team that John is working uh, in knows when John is going on holidays and is also able to yeah, that's that's a special if and it's also able to add this event to their calendar. So like I'm working with John and mm. now I know when he's on his leave and I can add this fact to my calendar so that I won't miss it. And that's that's basically the ICS file that that I generated uh, and awesome. I downloaded it from from Blob. Yeah, I think it will just open somewhere in the background. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's awesome. awesome. Oh, I... there it is. Right. Yeah. So that's just especially for general researcher dates. So I can then save it and have it. That's really right. Cool. So that's the first demo I had. The second one uh, is around um, is around the solution that I am presenting with my co-speaker Edita uh, during our conferences, conf conferencing speak speaking. Um, it's about 
it's about uh, handling what it is. It's about handling Twitter posts so that we've created a flow that is listening to Twitter and then once a new tweet appears, it simply gets its details and saves saves it to SharePoint so that we have then built a Power BI report on top of it. However, recently I've added a new feature, a new functionality to this flow that every time <clears throat> the new tweet appears, uh, it is also creating an adaptive card with the contents of the tweet. And also if it has media, so the images, mm -hmm. it is also using the media to, uh, I mean, it's, it's creating a, a part of the JSON code of the definition of the card to also include the media. And also if there is one image, it is just, um, it is just creating a, uh, like a code for a single image, just just the image. Mm -hmm. And if there are multiple, it is building an image set with images inside. So finally, what the flow does looks like that. Uh, right, so like this is an example having multiple images in a post. Oh, wow. this, is, this is an example of having just one image in a post. Um, so that's, that's just an adaptive card sent by the flow if there is a new tweet. Yeah. So it, image set is something that adaptive card understands? Like it's an image set, so it's like multiple images? Yes, image set is just a gallery. However, it doesn't really work perfectly. There are a number of issues <laughs> with the layout. Okay. okay. Um, so it, like, for example, the images are not very adopting the width and height automatically. Yeah. So you ju I, I just, I, I wasn't able to make them bigger because if I set their height to be like automatic, they were just so big, they <laughs> were overlapping the the, um, the yeah. frame of the adaptive card. So it works, but it has its issues. <clears throat> oh, this, and then this it, is good enough, just, right? yeah, so it, just, just an example of the adaptive card without any image. So that's just a custom layout. So yeah, basically this is how this is how the adaptive card composition works uh, for Microsoft Teams, and because I'm not a developer myself, so I cannot present you any demo of, uh, for example, adaptive card being used in Windows Timeline or in Cortana skills, because it re requires me to create my own application that mm -hmm. is posting is posting those cards to those uh, endpoints. Uh, however using adaptive cards with Microsoft Teams is also opening a really wide variety of opportunities and I mean scenarios uh, how you can benefit from from them uh, in yeah. business processes. All right so now a little little bit uh, about the history uh, sorry history about the future. Um, okay today uh, you can mostly use the version 1.0 uh, as I said, however, the one that is today published one and is uh, like the, the final version uh, released is version 1.2 and Microsoft, uh, sorry, the, the Matt, uh, they're working on version 1.3, uh, which estimated time for um, preview version is end of this year and they supposed to release it somewhere around February 2020. Um, for version 1.1 and 1.2, there were already some cool features released like the media support. So you can play video and music right from the card. You can embed, uh, you can embed film, movies and play them uh, like, like in YouTube. You cannot do it still in version 1.0. So you cannot use this, this kind of feature uh, in Teams. Another, mm -hmm. another fantastic thing is that they are supporting base 64 strings. Because today, if you'd like, for example, to show um, an avatar of the user who is requesting something, you can use his image from SharePoint or from uh, from Graph API. No, from mm. Graph you cannot because that's the base 64. But you can use um, the image from from user profile in SharePoint. However, if the session that you are logged in in Teams is not authorized in SharePoint, this image is not going to be displayed simply because the session has not, no access to SharePoint. Yeah. And, and therefore, if you, and therefore in version 1.1, 1.2, you can use base 64 strings and display the images wherever they are stored. 
So it is one awesome. question that we have in the chat, and I know you're going to cover the other versions, uh, but like which uh, version would you recommend to use? Is that is a question from Michelle. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is really uh, depending on, on what options you have, because if you want to use only with these out of the box versions that are implemented in uh, Microsoft applications, then you have to really rely on version 1.0 because in Teams there is just this version and you cannot use features from version 1.1 or 1.2. But if you are creating your own application, your own flow bot, uh, sorry, your own bot on, on bot framework or any other kind of application like in JavaScript, then I'd recommend you to go to the latest version. Okay, that's, that's good, yep. Um, right, so another thing is that you have inline actions. So in rich HTML, field you can use like hyper hyperlinks there is also some basic data validation for example if you have form or just this this example i showed you you have um, an approval task and for example if you have the rejection scenario you'd like to request user to fill in comments so to provide the reason for the rejection today in version 1.0 you cannot you cannot make this field required so it will always be sent uh, but having the data validation uh, in version 1.1, you can mark a field that is required and therefore uh, mm -hmm. you cannot send uh, your outcome if the, if the field is empty. Um, now about version 1.3, um, they're working on uh, something that is called the universal HTTP action. Like today you have two actions. First, first is for posting, second one is for get. And in 1.3 it's going to be uh, merged uh, into, one, into, one, uh, into one action. Uh, they will also implement uh, themable icons so that you will be able to use uh, icons on buttons. Um, there is also going to be uh, the more advanced input validation using regular expressions, for example. It was also going to be more responsive. And one of the very interesting features is also going to be uh, implemented is the dynamic, dynamic searchable select field. So that um, imagine you have a very long select field, uh, select uh, yeah, option. And then once you start, once you are typing the values, the list of options is, is going to be narrowed down to only those matching uh, what, you, what you are typing. So that is also going to be, to be present. And apart from working on the version 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 in the future, um, Tim is also working on multiple like add-ons, add-ins to, to adaptive cards. First is the version 2.0, it's called the vNext. It is, it is like a separate library, so you can use it along with, for example, version 1.2. And it's called the templating language because it allows you to, um, to create adaptive cards from templates, basically, uh, for given JSON schema. It is, I'll just show you, show you a demo how it works. Um, it is also, um, delivering the data bindings and binding scopes. This is a concept that you have um, a data somewhere, um, either within a data, sorry, even within an adaptive card or stored as well. And then once you display uh, an adaptive card, the bindings that are inside the, the code are being replaced with actual values. And then the scopes gives you the opportunity to uh, like make um, a conditional parts of the card and conditional uh, conditionally displaying content. So, for example, you you can have different uh, look and feel of the card and different different information shown by the card when you display it on um, Android, on iOS, or in Windows. Also, you can have a single card but displaying different information uh, based on what user is displaying it. Um, the version 2.0 is also delivering the for each loop so that if you if the data uh, source has a table of multiple uh, containing multiple rows, you will be able to use the for each to just display them all. And also functions like if switch, um, I mean if else switch and, and other logic functions functions. So therefore um, you'll be also able to create a much more complex uh, composition of the of the adaptive card. 
And lastly, what uh, what I had today, what was introduced today, is that you can also use a library that is called Adaptive Cards Fabric, that will simply replace all the icons inside Adaptive Card with those coming from UI Fabric, um, and it looks like that. So that's that's Adaptive Card, um, the library. Uh, it's it's under uh, under this URL, so you can just check it. And simply using this library of the icons, you have in forms in uh, in in the cart basically are taken from known well known adapt uh, from well known UI fabric set of icons. So that is something new. Mm. Now speaking about this 2.0 version, um, if you go to the URL that is called the vnext dot adaptive cart. That IO slash designer, you'll see the designer dedicated to version 2.0. And now the thing that you can see here is that on the left there is just this um, JSON for creating an adaptive card. On the right there is the uh, the data that I said. And now, for example, if I use here um, that should work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that should work, but maybe it's not working for some reason. So that this first name should be in the end replaced by the John. All right. I'll show you a different thing around this uh, around this concept. So <clears throat> about the templating language. Imagine uh, you have multiple graph explorer responses that you can that you can get when when requesting and you can check with the adaptive cards if there is already a template to display information from for, for this kind of a, of a JSON. And to do that, um, first you have to call first you have to call um, the URL that is called the template adaptive cards .io find, and that is simply calling the Louis, the, the cognitive services um, that checks for this payload if there is any template matching its content. So, mm. for example, for Graph Microsoft Common Profile, its confidence is 100%. Uh, there is also a different template that is called the Finos. It's a financial template that is already implemented. But then if you'd like to have uh, this template used for the data here, you simply have to take the URL, replace find, change get to post, and send. And in return, you are given a code for adaptive card using the data. So you can now see that I have an adaptive card for the user profile from the mm -hmm. Graph API already filled with data. Um, but I can also have the get, and if I use the get, I'll just get the same the same template, but with empty data i mean with the placeholders mm -hmm. so that that is that is just a template yeah. that is being displayed uh that is being i mean all, all those all those placeholders have been replaced with actual data if you suppose so that is that is the 2.0 version mm -hmm. and the templating language itself and also um there is currently a private i don't have an access there uh on github uh, the, on GitHub, yeah, and there's a private project about those templates, and much showed today that they are really working to deliver a couple of already already predefined sets. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have it somewhere. Maybe I did a screenshot, <laughs> but no, I don't. I didn't make a screenshot. Okay. So anyway, they're just thinking about opening this uh, this uh, project to anyone, or on the other hand, to allow you to have your own private repository. Like if you'd like to have your own templates within your own organization, uh, they will allow you to have your private repository and then use your templates with your adaptive cards. But as well, uh, they are 
really counting on the community and the input from the community so that anyone will be able to create template and then submit them to the to the project so they believe this concept of templates is really going to grow fast uh, once it is open um yep i think that's it and yeah basically that, that's <laughs> all from me so if you have any questions you can you can now unmute yourself and ask them or you can find me on my blog and ask them there yeah, we uh, I think David was it. He posted the link to your video on this, so which kind of goes into more details. Um, and yeah, what's that? Yeah, maybe maybe yes. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I wasn't following the. Yeah, that's fine. I, I saw the link, and uh, I saw also uh, Michelle and Clifton. They have been uh, trying out adaptive cards, so uh, they shared their stories as well. So yeah, feel free to ask any questions at this point of time. Um, right, so maybe I'll just, I'll just maybe post here those uh, URLs I, I know. Yeah. Okay, the fabric is already posted. And I guess one question that probably I can start off with is if, if let's say somebody who has not done anything, anything related to adaptive cards so far, they want to just start off, um, what should be the first thing that sh they should try out and how, how, like, what would be the easiest way to try out adaptive cards? Well, basically the easiest way, uh, if you don't, if you, if you are not a developer really, uh, but just a, you, the power user as says we are, mm -hmm. uh, is to start with the adaptive card that IO designer, so to just get more familiar with how it is being built, what are mm -hmm. the options uh, in the schema, how you can construct the layout, uh, how it changes, because you can also well, see how it, how it looks like in different, in different hosts here. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the, also an option. Um, also, they are working to add here this functionality to switch between the versions so that you'll be able to see what options are possible in version 1.0 and what is uh, in 1.2. And then just play play with it, really, because um, that's, that's the easiest part. And then if you want to create um, an adaptive card in Microsoft Teams, you have basically two options to do that. Um, so the first one, I'll just jump to the end. The first one is called post Sorry, uh, it's called the post adaptive card to mm -hmm. um, to a channel. So these are those two options I can use. Uh, you can post the channel and you can post to the user. Mm. Also, uh, also you can use a different kind of a communication in Teams, but it's not MS, it's not adaptive card. It's called um, post a choice option. Uh, ah, yeah, post cho yeah. a choice of options as a the flow bot to a user. So that that is also a very nice um, feature. So you can like post uh, a message to the user with buttons, with mm -hmm. custom custom options, and Microsoft Flow is going to wait until user clicks on any of those buttons. Oh, uh, okay. And, and then you can keep running the flow after that. Yes, so you can so like you can you can use it instead of tasks really. Mm -hmm. And also what I noticed today, I didn't I wasn't aware of that, is that the same action is present for Outlook. Huh. Here. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I, I've seen this, but does it go as an adaptive card? No, right? I mean this is in Outlook, mean, you get an email. This is an actionable message, basically. But actionable mm. message and adaptive card is is really the same thing. Okay. So, you, you, I mean, you, you can't you can't really take uh, an actionable uh, sorry an adaptive card and directly post it, as yeah. uh, you have to use a slightly different code. But the mm -hmm. basics are the same. Yeah, yeah. We have used this, and uh, actually, we're testing this for uh, like a visitor login uh, check-in system. So. We had, like I was using it to send email to the, the person who the visitor visiting, where it says the user can then check the visitor out. 
like the employee can check the visitor. So they have an option to check out. So they, once they click on it, it updates the SharePoint list and does it from there. So yeah, that's, that's a good one. So yes, I, I also think that Adaptive Cards is really going to be, I mean, they're already a very important concept, technology, I know, feature that Microsoft is, is delivering for the Power Platform, because it really helps you to stay inside Teams and really stay away from emails, basically. Yeah. And to also enhance this communication with users to, to make it more um, digestible. <laughs> mm -hmm. So to, yeah. to really um, pack the, the message with some contents, with images, with media files, and therefore to, to post it to the users to channel so that it's really easier mm. to, to use it, to adopt it, to, to read it and so on. And yeah, okay. I, I, I really like it. Yeah, uh, I guess one last question would be, uh, uh, what, what other good use cases did you can, uh, can you think or you probably have implemented those? I, I already saw multiple ones that you saw, showed in the demo. Any other good examples? Well, I was also working on, a, on a, an example that um, you have like a public form using forms, and then every time the form is, is, is submitted, uh, mm -hmm. it was a form about um, like the company producing containers like cans and uh, yeah, basically cans and glasses. Uh, okay. was having a form where their suppliers were able to register new concept for, for the packaging. And mm -hmm. once once they filled the form and it was submitted, there was also an adaptive card being posted to Teams with information about this new submission and also with options to um, to take part, like to open the form uh, with the details and uh, and then to act. Um, to contact the, the, the supplier. So that was another example. I was also thinking about, for example, um, if if the new um, task is assigned to you in uh, in Planner, you can as well post a message to, to Teams with a nice looking adaptive card. Like any mm -hmm. sort of communication really is, is, is you can handle with adaptive yeah. cards. What I'm really only missing is that you can't post, make a post uh, call to any any target application mm. okay. if, if you if you're not having your own uh, bot underneath yeah understood i'm i'm thinking one of the use cases could i mean could be you to use because there's a way to uh, trigger a uh, flow using siri i mean basically like using the siri shortcuts thing so mm. you can ask for multiple inputs and yeah, we're actually going to have a video soon on that. I'm going to post it, but I'm thinking we could also use it to generate adaptive cards in Teams by asking like inputs through Siri, and then you don't even need to kind of go and input something by hand. You just uh, like out of office or even travel request that you should like instead of selecting a form and stuff, I can just go into Siri and mm -hmm. uh, specify those two or three inputs and raise the adaptive card. So. Yeah, there's a lot of use cases around it. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry, I just made it to an That's hour. Okay. <laughs> no, this was this was really really I mean helpful. I, I mean I have just touched that Teams adaptive cards, but I haven't gone around to adaptive cards at IO, the designer, and I've seen the bits and pieces of it, but I haven't implemented it, and I'm pretty sure the audience as well. Uh, benefit a lot from this session. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, showing all this to us. You're welcome. It was a yeah. pleasure. I know. I mean, it's uh, super late for you as well. It's uh, almost like 1 a.m. And Michelle just mentioned it, so she's <laughs> leaving. Uh, but yeah, think... thank you so much. Uh, and I mean, yeah, feel free to drop if you need to. I'm just going to cover quickly some of the updates from the major updates from MBAS. Um, so maybe maybe five or ten minutes more, and then I mean, we'll keep it open for any questions or anything, apart from adaptive cards as well. If anyone wants to talk about or anyone has any doubts, happy to answer that. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, jump on to some MBAS updates. Well, I'm staying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let me share this. Okay. 
uh, teams has so many options to kind of share. It's kind of sometimes too like. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, let me minimize you. And I'll keep my teams open on the other screen. Okay, can you see my screen though? Okay. All right, so uh, some of the major MBAS updates. Um, I know a lot of you might have already heard about these things, but uh, we I'll try to cover some some of them in detail. Some of them just uh, touch upon them. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing I, which everyone has been super excited about is the AI builder. Um, there's a bunch of videos around it. Um, people have started making uh, the object detection videos. I'll be sharing some links as well on the next slide. And I'll uh, talk a bit more about the AI Builder. I mean, I'll talk about AI Builder a bit in detail. But uh, apart from the AI Builder Power Apps portals, if you haven't already heard about it, um, these are basically websites which you can kind of create and share it with your, I mean, customers. They can log in. Um, you can sh show the data from I mean, CRM or, I mean, they are still working on what all you can show over there. Um, this is, it's, I think it's still in preview or private preview. I'm not sure on that, but uh, it's not uh, GA yet. So keep keep waiting on that. But it it's it's a part of the October 2018. I mean 2019 release plan. I think they're calling the Wave 2 release. So uh, Power Apps portals uh, is definitely going to be super exciting for uh, kind of giving. I mean. Most of the stuff was internal today. I mean, it's, it's part of portal is similar to what Dynamics Portals was, but it's kind of ex, kind of you can do some more stuff. You can show some more stuff on that now because it's kind of part of portals. Uh, third thing, similar to I would say part of portals a bit, but it's actually sharing part apps basically with external users, so you can share it with the customers. Uh, they definitely would need a license, uh, like uh, you have to create a license. There are some uh, things around it uh, which will come out uh, soon, but um, it, I think a lot of people are super excited about it as well because, again, it's something which was internal. You are making it out. I mean, you are releasing it to the world now. You can kind of share it with your customers or partners. Uh, whatever the case be, but it's not just internal. You can actually uh, share it with others. Uh, responsive pages. Um, now this is, you might have seen uh, things around how to build responsive apps. Uh, there are a lot of features that the Power Apps team has built to, so that you can make your apps responsive. But uh, the responsive pages is basically a concept where it would be super easy to create a responsive layout of your app. So it would be basically, and if you haven't, if you if you know a bit about the Bootstrap framework for websites, uh, it would be something similar to that. Uh, again, not yet released. They are working towards this interface. They just kind of uh, showed up, uh, and uh, they basically want to have a unified interface for, I think, Canvas and model. So it's going to combine that, and plus you'll have some ways to create responsive apps within that uh, the new interface. And Canvas app testing—that's uh, something which I, for, from what I understood, and I'll try to best explain here, is you can create test use cases, uh, test cases for your apps, and do some testing. Uh, basically, people were either using Fiddler or something like that, but now, I mean, Power Apps team is building something so that you can actually use. I mean, Fiddler was sometimes blocked by or um, by the internal or I mean, your IT or something, but this tool will help you create some test cases and run some tests on your Canvas apps. You can measure the performance and all that stuff. So. Jumping on to AI Builder. Uh, only if I can click here. Yeah. 
So some of the links here, um, I'll, let me, I'll, I'll be posting these links uh, in the chat. Uh, but there's uh, this official blog post. Uh, actually, let me share the screen now. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, so, uh, not this one. Yeah. Uh, missed this. It's not this one, but. Uh, Anyways, I mean, basically uh, the AI builder has like multiple AI models that you can build. So binary classification is one where you can actually predict data based on uh, the historical data. I mean, you can predict something based on the historical data. Uh, and that's more, I mean, all these AI models require CDS. Now, if you don't have CDS, you can still you can create a preview environment or a community plan, you can use that build your kind of test CDS environment and play around with these before you uh, build it into your production. Uh, and again, all this is preview stuff right now. It's not uh, it's not in production. So uh, this is still something that I would say test, it's still in testing mode so you can test around with things. I, I wouldn't, I mean, personally recommend to start using it in production apps as of now. Um, so binary classification uh, form processing, that's uh, basically you can scan invoices or um, uh, receipts kind of so, and detect fields within these forms or uh, invoices. And then basically you can take those fields and do something with it, and maybe put it into your database, um, ERP system or SharePoint list or CDS, wherever you want to put it but it helps detecting fields from your forms. Object detection is the one which a lot of people have been playing around with uh, because it's, I think, the most coolest one. <laughs> uh, a bunch of videos on that, uh, links for which, let me, let me put this in here, the Teams chat. Uh, all right, so, uh, uh, there's an official video from Embas uh, where the, the Power Apps team went through this, uh, the demo um, of the whole AI builder. So you can look at that. Shane also did a demo on the object detection where he uh, detected different types of figurines or toys. Basically, he had like Chewy and other things, bunch of random stuff that he had. And uh, he was able to detect even where it was like bunch of objects in one image. Uh, so pretty cool video. And uh, he goes into step by step how to build the object detection model. April was, I, I think, the first one to release a video on the uh, object detection AI builder. Um, she made a model for detecting swag and the power art badges in specific. Um, so you can detect that and uh, basically have an inventory of your swag that you um, are carrying with you. I also did one demo. Oops. Uh, I actually have a demo on um, the object detection, the uh, form processing, and the business card scanner. Uh, all it's in one playlist, so you can uh, just click on this and uh, see all the videos around it. Um, and docs. So, I mean, if you are stuck at any point in docs, this is the official documentation. You can refer it. It's still, I would say, is not, uh, doesn't have everything, I would say, because there's, there's still a preview thing. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they are working towards adding some more stuff in here so that you can easily use the AI builder. Um, so, that's, I think, uh, more or less on the AI builder. Um, uh, let me see. Yeah, that's, I mean, AI builder was the main thing that I wanted to cover. Uh, I know a lot of people have been uh, trying to build something cool with it. I'm still trying to um, see what kind of use cases businesses come up with. Um, I know it's all cool and nice, but uh, 
at the end of the day, you need to use it in something which makes sense for your business. Um, one of the things which, uh, I mean, in my video, I build a use case, and this is more of a personal use case, where I could detect the uh, my wife's cosmetics uh, and add it to uh, the Amazon cart uh, using uh, by the uh, the item number or something. So I was able to click a button, add it to Amazon cart, and order it. Um, but I think that personal use case can actually be used by small businesses where they can detect some of their items uh, through their app and uh, building this app and then uh, place orders for it or create like a kiosk thing. Uh, I mean, it, there's a bunch of use cases that you can think are, uh, around it. I, I mean, still previous, I don't know if people will start using it in production, but uh, you know, at least when it comes into production, there'll be a bunch of uh, things that you'll see around it. Um, if you haven't used uh, any of the cognitive services before, I would say still try to, I mean, if you want to actually understand how these all these things work, and you want to go a bit deeper, uh, go into the, the docs on the cognitive services, like com computer vision, um, there's face recognizer as well. So face API, all those things are, I mean, those things are being used. Those are the backend for these services, AI builder, but it's an easier, simpler kind of citizen developer tool. They're building on top of the cognitive services and CDS so that you can uh, build these models easily and use it in your apps. Uh, I guess any questions on any of the updates or anything that anyone wants to share from MPAS? Okay. Uh, if not that, I'll. Uh, so next, uh, our next user group meeting would be on August eighth. Uh, mostly, it will be uh, uh, a remote only as well because uh it's it's just uh I, I think we get much more audience and i mean cincinnati is we are not able to get a lot of people on, on site for it so um i would appreciate everyone to take a quick survey it's not a big one it's a pretty simple and sweet survey here i posted the link on the team's chat um and uh hopefully you can join us um uh, next month as well Tomas, uh, thanks again for joining us today all the way from Poland. Uh, I appreciate your time and uh, staying till, I mean, it's almost 1.30 a.m. there mm -hmm. right now. So I really appreciate you being online. And thank you, everyone, who joined uh, our user group meeting uh, today. And uh, I'll be posting it uh, online as well on my YouTube channel. Um, and if you need any links or if you have any thoughts or any comments or if you want to present in the next user group meeting, please let me know um, and we will make sure that we can uh, have you on the user group meeting as a presenter. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye. And I'll have to stop recording here. The last time I forgot doing that. <laughs>